right, everybody, welcome. I'm trying this, uh, giving this a second go um, to try to get, uh, get it to where I can see your comments. And I think maybe I got it worked out this time. All right, so um, if you are here and you can see me um, drawing one class, um, please go ahead and type in your comments uh, to the comments section if you are here. So um, let's go ahead and see. Um, I'm going to type something. I'm going to lean up and type something here into the comments. And I'm just putting my name. And if you are here, let me know you're here by typing something into the comments. I can now see the comments and um, it looks like everything is going. Uh, there, there is some kind of really uh, big lag on the audio, which I uh, apologize for and I'll try to fix that for next time. But anyway, so if you are, if you come in during this video, comment in the chat. And um, so this video is for the first day of class. And um, what I'd like to do is to um, to talk a little bit about um, talk a little bit about um, the class as far as um, the syllabus and the iCollege page. Um, so the iCollege page um, is um, the iCollege page, uh, hopefully you've had a chance to visit. I have it set up to where I'm going to um, uh, under content, if you look under content, this is where um, where everything exists. Oh good, I see I have someone, Corey Swigert. Hopefully this is working. Corey, let me ask you something because I'm getting a warning here about my uh, resolution. Is there is there a really strange lag on my audio? Um, I'm just wondering, is it like is my uh, is my voice syncing up with with the video? Just curious. Type in the chat. Um, so this is going to be, like I said before, this is going to be kind of uh, rough at first while I work out all the kinks. Now that I actually have an audience who can give me some feedback, um, we'll get this worked out to where it's it's very smooth. Um, at any rate, um, you know, everything is matching up. Okay, good. Very good. Okay. Um, so I'll start over again. We have, um, if you have not yet visited the um, the iCollege page, please visit the iCollege page, and there is a welcome module that I want you to go to first. Um, in the welcome module, there's there's a little uh, space at the end that um, tells you or asks you to to share a little bit about yourself with me, and in that way. If you do that, that way I know that you have um, visited uh, the iCollege page. Also, in the iCollege page, the syllabus is spelled out pretty pretty clearly. Um, in the syllabus, you'll find um, you'll find the um, information at, about assignments um, and uh, instructions. Um, and I have um, some videos there, not videos, but some, um, some uh, PowerPoints that I'm going to go back in and I'm going to give those PowerPoints and record them. And they'll be listed under content in, under each module. Okay? So what we're going to start doing um, today is really we're just going to talk about uh, the course in general. We're going to try to get people... Um, uh, talking in the comments. Hello, Forever Stars. I see you're here. Um, so we're just going to try to work out all the kinks today. Um, and I am going to answer any questions you have. So um, let's start 
about supplies starter pack. I don't have that many supplies for you yet because the way it works is, is I need to see how many people are going to be in the class um, and people are still adding this class because it's still the drop ad period. But I'm going to put in my order today for extra supplies. Um, so what you'll, when I've uh, told you before about getting a supply starter kit, um, it's just going to be this little paper bag. And what's in this paper bag is just the supplies that I have left over from last semester that I could spare. Um, and so what you guys are going to start out with um, are three charcoal pencils, a 2B, a 4B, and a 6B. And this, this is a bamboo skewer. Um, and I use it to teach sighting and measuring. And we'll get more into that later. But what you essentially do is you close one eye and you use it like this and in front of you to measure objects relative to, to other objects. So let's say I'm looking at a vase that's about five feet away from me. And what I'll do is I'll put, close one eye, I'm going to lock my elbow, and I'll, I'll put up my stick and I'll measure, closing one eye, the, the length from the end of the stick to the edge of, of the vase. So I'll put one, the, the end of the stick on the edge of the vase, let's say, and then I'll scoot my thumb to where it reaches the other end of that vase. And then I can use that measurement to compare to other measurements. And, and that, that all has to do with proportion. Okay, so that is kind of the reason for doing sighting and measuring with a stick, is that you're able to take a small measurement and then take that small measurement and compare it to other measurements in what you're looking at. So let's say you're looking at a vase. A vase, um, once you close one eye, the idea behind that is to flatten things out, right? So our, our eye sight, when we use both eyes, kind of allows things to look more three-dimensional. But when you close one eye, it sort of allows you a little bit of ability to, um, to flatten things out and to, to just kind of imagine things as more flat. Because what we're doing in drawing, right, we are, we are looking at three-dimensional objects when we're drawing from life, and so whenever I say life drawing, that's what I'm talking about, is that we're looking at, at objects or a scene from life, and we're taking that 3D scene, and we're trying to, to turn it into two dimensions on our paper, right? So what you can do then with this, with this stick is you can then um, look at your um, object, and then you can see how, how tall it is to how wide it is. So let's say I'm looking at a flat square. This is a really bad example, but it, it, it's going to help me um, get you to understand proportion. So let's say you're looking at just a square. It's just flat. And it's painted on the wall. And you want to see how you can take that square that's on the wall and put it on your paper. So you're going to take your stick and you're going to line, you're going to close one eye, you're going to straighten your elbow, and you're going to put this end of the stick on one, e one edge of the square, and then you're going to move your thumb until your thumb lines up with the other edge of the square. And then that gets you the width of that square. And now if you turn your stick this way and you line it up and you keep your thumb here, you want to know that measurement. What you want to know is how does that width measurement compare to the height measurement of that square. So then I'm going to take this end of the stick and line it up to the height of the square. And, and I'm going to move this to where it goes to the, um, the other end of the square. Truth is, it's a square. I won't have to move anything, right? Because a square has the same height this way as it does width that way. So the reason I, that I was using a square as, as an example is that in your measurement of that square, you'll find that the width and the length 
are the same. And that is what I mean by proportion. It's a one-to-one -one proportion. What that means is, you know, not, people get really scared when I start talking about math. They're like, I thought this was a drawing glass. Well, all that means is one side is the same as the other side. And knowing that information, I can then draw that square on my paper as big as I want it, right? If, you, if I tell you, I want you to make this drawing small of the square. Well, you can say to, to yourself, all right, well, I know the square is um, it's the same height as, as it is width. So I can decide I'm going to draw the square this big. And then you can say, okay, here's the height. And then um, I can take my stick and I can say, okay, here's the, here's the width. And I have a small square. But what if I said to you, I want this drawing to be really large. So take that square that's painted on the wall over there that you're looking at and, and you know, fill up your whole paper with it. Um, then what you can do for that is you can you can then just make a bigger square. It's one to one, right? So that's one, and this is one, right? And so I'm going to make a really big square here. And so this is a super simple demonstration. We just have to imagine doing this with um, with objects, like a, for example, a vase. Well, what if you have a vase that is two times um, as tall as it is wide? So let's say this, you're, we're, we're just going to fit um, the vase into a square. This is one-to-one -one relationship, the width and the height are equal. Now if I wanted to have something where the, the height was two times the width, um, then I can, make, um, I can make this box and I can fit, uh, let's say the vase has this shape, something like that, I can, I can fit it in here. Um, so I'm really kind of off track right now. I want to really give people a chance to get here so we can go back to talking about the syllabus. But, and this is really terrible vase. But let's say that there is your vase. It's um, twice as tall as it is wide. If I, if actually I'd have to extend it to here for that to be true. Let's try that again. All right, there's your vase. All right, so that is getting off track. So let's see who's here. Um, we've got Forever Stars. We've got Corey Swigert, Paolo de Lima. Good morning. And Dean Hassel. Good morning. Now, the one thing that I can't do is hear you, so I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name. Um, I'll try to, to get it as good as I can. All right, uh, Alexis, great. Oh, thought I was going to do a Zoom. Uh, sorry about that. Um, no problem. Um, we, I did talk about doing a Zoom. You did not imagine that. Um, I actually talked about doing both things. So I think what we'll do um, right now is we're going to try to test out this video and talk a little bit about um, the syllabus and different things. Um, and then uh, after... Um, we can, um, I can send out a Zoom link after this, and that way we can all see each other's faces. Um, so let's, let's do that. And um, uh, I will continue. Um, people are going to be kind of coming in late. It's like this, the first day of class um, at school. So we'll give everybody a chance to kind of get this figured out. And, and I'm pretty sure most, most people um, who haven't looked at the iCollege page yet won't be, or, or haven't checked their email, won't be able to really show up here. Um, but again, this is the bag that I'm going to be um, sending to school today. 
When we're done, I'm going to take these, these bags up um, and give them to Jen. Check your email for details on where to pick it up. Um, and I'm in it, there's just going to be three charcoal pencils, a bamboo skewer, and uh, a piece of vine charcoal should also be in there. And that's just to get you, get you going for the next class. Um, I also want to clarify, in my email, I had said that I'd be um, streaming live daily, and that is true, uh, but I have two sections of drawing, so my, my initial um, idea was that I'm going to be doing um, uh, this stream today, um, on Monday, um, and for people who couldn't make today, I'm going to do it again tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, I'll do a new stream, um, and then I'll repeat that stream on Thursday. And I'm just going to do that um, for the first, uh, the first week or two, just to make sure everybody has a chance to um, get onto the stream and to, to, to um, type comments in the chat. Um, just this week is really going to be testing out this system that we're using and trying to fix any problems that we have. Um, okay, so let's get back to the course. Um, I talked a little bit about citing and measuring. Citing and measuring is our first module. So this is the way the class is set up. On your iCollege page, if you go to content, there's a, there's a welcome section. I want you to go through that welcome section. I believe there's a video in there. Um, and there is a section where you can fill out some information on yourself. And then after that, there is a section that has the syllabus. So you can view the syllabus and look at the course policies, look at the, the course schedule, and look at the due dates and how the modules are laid out. Then underneath that, there, um, there's a folder for each module. So if you click on the fo folder for module one, module one is citing and measuring, where we'll be using our bamboo skewers to look at objects, uh, real life objects, and um, we will be citing them and measuring them and drawing them. Um, so in that section, um, if there is uh, a PowerPoint, then it's going to be in that module folder. I still have yet to do the voiceover for the PowerPoint um, for this first module, so I'll be doing that very shortly, and, and it'll appear there um, as a, it'll say uh, narrated PowerPoint, and it'll say um, web page under it. And that what that means is that I have um, separately, not on this YouTube platform, but um, in iCollege, I have uploaded a video, essentially an audio recording of me giving the PowerPoint, and you'll hear my voice as if I'm giving it to you live. You just won't be able to see my face on those. So those are the narrated PowerPoints. Um, and also under each, in each module folder, you, I put samples of student work so that you can read, um, you know, any instructions in the module, but you can also look at student work. Um, and I also put links to any videos that are not mine in each module folder. Um, I sometimes have uh, videos that I think, uh, you know, done by other people that I think are good for you to watch. Um, so let's, I'm going to bring out my newsprint pad. Um, this is, um, if you watch the supplies videos, you'll be familiar with the look of this newsprint pad. And I did uh, talk about this, but this is an example of student work for our um, citing and measuring portion, um, our module one portion. So what this is, is this is just a drawing of a still life that I set up in the classroom. And there was a wine bottle, some uh, grapes, some fruit on an oval-shaped box. And there was a vase with some flowers in it. Um, and as you can see, this is just a line drawing. Um, this first module is teaching us how to cite and measure and get proportions right. Um, if you tuned in earlier, you know that proportion is height relative to width. Okay, Everything has a height and a width. 
And if you've ever looked at yourself in a funhouse mirror, uh, if you I don't know if that's still a thing, but in, in one of those mirrors that makes you look either shorter than you are and wider, or it makes you look longer and skinnier, um, that's what happens when proportions are off. Um, proportions look strange um, when when I mean people and objects don't look right when their proportions are off. So the key to drawing realistically is to understand the function of height to width and to understand how to measure it so that your proportions are more accurate. All right. So in this drawing, what we did is we had we looked at this still life and we did a series of measurements. Um, we found out that the bottle was four times as tall as it is wide, um, and different things like that. So we just kind of re uh, measure things relative to one another. And you can see this line here. This line is what I call is dropping an angle. Or in the sighting and measuring vi video um, that you have, she calls it mapping. So if I'm drawing this wine bottle, and I want to know where to put it relative to this vase, or where to put it relative to this hat box. I see um, there, there are several things I look at. One is negative space. In the chat, does anybody know what I mean by negative space? Anybody? Type it in. Negative space. All right, well, no takers, I'm going to go ahead and say then, negative space is the space in between objects, like the space in between this wine bottle and this oval box. Uh, it has a shape, and that is called negative space. So I guess you could say the shape of the bottle is positive space, uh, and the shape of the box is positive space, but the space in between is negative space, and you can measure that too. Um, the space in between the vase and the wine bottle here is, is negative space. It, it has a particular shape and a particular proportion as well, right? And so when we map, so I'm going to get back to this line here. When we map, we um, measure the angle. So you can get your, your arm straight again, and you hold the bamboo skewer like this. Okay, and you can measure um, the relative angle. So I, I'll put this, if I measure the top, a line, of, um, the top of this stick with the wine bottle on this side, and I align the top of the, if I turn it this way, I can get the angle. So if I'm looking at this scene over here, and I line this up with the top of the wine bottle, and then I line up this end with the edge of the vase, I get that angle. So then I can take that measurement, try not to move my wrist, and I can move it to my paper. And I can draw that line and say, okay, well, I know if I've drawn this vase first, I can draw this line and I say, well, I know the top of the wine bottle comes up to right about here. They intersect right about at the end of this angle. And so that's called mapping. In your um, module folder, uh, module one, there is a video on sighting, measuring, and mapping. Um, and it's a good one to look at. So um, Paolo, yes, you got it there. Empty space relative to objects. Very good. So, um, so that's what uh, this first module is going to be about. So I also struggled with the idea of, you know, since it's life drawing, and since we're all in different rooms, unfortunately I can't set up a still life like I usually do and have everyone draw the same still life. So I thought about this and I thought, well, you know, should I, should I set up a still life here and take a picture of it? And, but then if we do it that way, then you're still drawing from a picture. And that's taking 2D and translating it into 2D. What I want you to be able to do is to take 3D objects and I want you to be able to translate that into a, a 3D object 
into 2D drawing. So what I think I'm going to have us do for the first assignment um, is that I'm going to have you guys set up your own still lives at home. And um, what I found about still lives and about charcoal is it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be fruit and, and flowers and uh, things like that. Um, even just everyday ordinary objects look gorgeous in charcoal and they're fun to draw. I had a student once who just did, uh, he was making up an assignment and he had to do a still life at home. And he did uh, a drawing of a can, some canned goods and a bottle of mustard and one other object. And it was really just beautiful. Um, charcoal has a way of doing that. So if you haven't made friends with charcoal yet, my goal is to help you become friends with charcoal. Um, all right, so this is the first module. The first module is citing and measuring. Um, we'll be doing drawings like this, where we're really just concerned about getting the outline. We're concerned about getting um, proportions right. And we're also concerned with using this um, bamboo skewer to cite and measure objects. So what we're trying to do here first is to focus on just being able to increase the accuracy of our drawing. What you're doing is you're training your eye to pay more attention to proportions so that when I ask you to draw a picture of a bottle, you don't draw, uh, you don't put a bottle in front of you and then just draw the bottle that exists in your mind. That's, that's what a lot of people do and I'm going to try to break you of that habit. If you put a bottle in front of you and I ask you to draw it, you're going to be drawing that bottle. Not just a generic bottle, but the actual bottle that's in front of you. What's its height relative to its width? How long is the neck of the bottle relative to its height and its width? Um, so it's really kind of analytical at first, and it, it's, it starts feeling a little bit uh, tiresome. Um, but what happens, just like anything else, um, is the more you practice it, the easier it gets. Just like the first time you pick up an instrument, um, I'll never forget, I played trumpet in high school. The first time I, I picked up um, a trumpet, I was like, how does anyone make music with this thing? It just sounds terrible. And that's because you just have to practice and, and repeat yourself until, um, until you start learning how to, how to play, if, if it's an instrument, or how to draw, um, if you're in a drawing class. And the other thing I usually say on the first day um, is that a lot of people believe um, that you people who can draw are just born with it. And, and that might be true for some people. You know, might be able to draw a little bit better than others, um, just um, just as this natural ability that they have. But the truth is, drawing is a learned skill, just like anything else. Uh, it's really a lot like playing an instrument. You have to practice on a daily basis to improve your skills. And a, a lot of learning drawing is up here, and that's what we're going to be talking about. It's learning how to see. It's learning how to sight and measure. Um, and that's a good starting place for learning how to draw. And so my goal is to get all of you, um, by the end of this course, to draw much better than you did on the first day. Okay? And, and as, as long as you show up and you do the work, you will improve. Um, and, and that's a promise. Um, so I know that drawing and... Um, Showing your drawings in front of other people is a little uncomfortable at first, but what I like to do with my classes is create a real sense of community. Um, we have critique uh, when we finish drawings, and that just means we, let's say everybody did this drawing, um, we, when we're in the classroom, we put the drawings up um, on the wall. We have a really big wall in the drawing classroom, and we look at the drawings and we give each other feedback. Um, and it's not to criticize one another, as the name would imply, but it's really to help one another um, to look at the drawings and say, hey, you did this great, um, but it looks like maybe the bottle was a little bit, you know, the proportions are a little bit off. 
um, and maybe it's um, you've got it drawn a little too wide or or maybe the bottle looks perfect but the neck is too skinny um, all of this that we're doing with each other is to try to hone our skills and um, teach each other um, how to become better drawers and I want to do that with a sense of community um, with a sense of support and caring for one another um, especially during these times I mean these times have been really tough I don't know about you guys uh, if, if it's been tough um, one thing I have figured out is that during this pandemic everybody's had a kind of a different experience of it um, and no doubt that it's been it's been tough so what I'd like our class to be is, is an oasis of support and learning and creativity um, and so when we do our critiques I'd like for that to come through and so the question you probably have now is how are we going to do these critiques live well there is a um, discussion board that is on iCollege and it's not as much fun as being in person but what you'll do is you'll upload your drawings you'll have to take a photograph of your drawing and when you do that I suggest that you put your your drawing uh, on a wall or um, if, when you get your drawing board you can clip your drawing board your drawing to your drawing board and try to take a photo of it where it's not totally you know skewed um, so try to take take it so that it's or at least edit it afterwards so that it looks pretty square and then upload it to the discussion page and then under your drawing you'll make some comments about your experience of making the drawing and there when other people visit the discussion page they're going to be able to give you feedback underneath the photo of your drawing um, and that does not happen in in real time um, but I think it's really the best way to do it because then you can spend time with uh, each person's drawing and you can type out your comments um, and so that's how that's how the critique is going to work. All right, so this is going on too long, but this is a uh, module one, sighting and measuring. We're just doing uh, line drawings. We're focusing on measurement. We're focusing on increasing our accuracy of proportion. Um, we're going to be looking at negative spaces, realizing when you don't quite know how how to how to draw something like this. This is the end of uh, an apple or a pear. Actually, I think it was a pear. And if I'm kind of confused about how to draw it, I can I can help myself by looking at the negative spaces. I can say, well, okay, it's there's about this much space in between this pear and the bottle. Over here, there there's like a triangle right here. And so I'm going to draw this line. And so drawing is about looking at relationships the relationship of one object to another where is it placed next to it what next to another object what does that negative space look like um, is it in front or is it behind you know this is called overlapping when one thing is in front of something else and it obscures your view of the object behind it um, so you can look at where those things intersect um, when i'm drawing this bundle of grapes here I can look at the, um, the box height and I can say, well, the bundle of grapes, it comes up to the box about halfway. And I can draw a line across here with my vine charcoal. The vine charcoal is, is um, really um, important because what it does is it's kind of like a dry erase board in some way. So I can make line, but then I can also kind of just erase it with my hand. And if I got the eraser on that, I could probably get it to go away. And if I don't, it'll probably be covered up with something else, right? So this is why I love using this vine charcoal um, at the beginning of, of um, drawing because what I want to teach you is that when I ask you to draw something, I want you to kind of loosen up and realize that you're going to make mistakes. You go ahead and make those mistakes and then you erase them and, and you start over. Um, if I ask you to draw a circle, I don't want you to take your, your pencil like this, like you're used to writing, right? This is called the, um, I don't know, I guess we'll call this the overhand grip. Um, and if you very painstakingly try to draw 
a circle, chances are it's not going to look great. Actually, that's not bad. Uh, but the way that I would, I would teach you to draw a circle would be to use um, this vine charcoal and to do, uh, use your whole arm. Hold your charcoal like this instead of like this. And use your whole arm to do what we call ghosting, which is you start making the motion of a circle. And then, uh, this has got water damage here, let me say it. Then you um, start making lines, make a whole bunch of lines, until it starts to look like a circle. And then you kind of just end up with something that's fairly accurate. And look at me, I'm loose, I'm relaxed, I'm not stressed out. Um, if I look at it and say, okay, well this looks a little flat, then I can come back again and press down a little harder in that area. All right, so it's things like this that start to make drawing easier. All right, so this is, this is gonna be module one. Um, and this, this paper is good for warming up. Um, what I would like for you to do, um, let me show you another warm-up that I did. This is an example of a warm-up where um, I started, uh, just like you saw me doing that ghosting method with a circle, um, this is called an ellipse. What, what you see here is a bunch of cylinders, but I started off um, trying to loosen up by making ellipses, okay? So ellipses um, are very difficult, and they're frustrating because they're hard to draw. And I'm not going to get into it right now, but just wanted to show you an example of what we're going to be doing to loosen up, and that is to start drawing our basic shapes. We're going to draw ellipses, we're going to draw spheres, and um, circles. Um, we're also going to draw cubes. Um, and what's the reason for that? Well, the reason is most things are comprised of these basic shapes. So, for example, a vase is probably uh, is like a modified cylinder. Um, a pumpkin which we will draw. I have a, a pumpkin over here. A pumpkin is kind of like a modified sphere. Um, and so what we do is we learn how to, to draw and, and to shade the basic shapes. And that is going to um, help you in everything you draw. So let's say I'm drawing um, a twig or a branch. Uh, what shape is that? It's a, it's a cylinder. Right? It's a modified cylinder. It's not a perfect cylinder, but it's cylindrical, and it's going to catch light like a cylinder catches a light. A tree trunk. A tree trunk is a modified cylinder, right? Um, and so we have, have things like that. We're going to just start to try to start thinking in that way, um, how, how everyday objects are um, derived from the most basic shapes. Um, so I'm going to talk about that on the next live stream. On the, the next live stream, um, the one tomorrow is going to be another introductory live, live stream to make sure that everyone has had a chance to um, come in and uh, ask questions. And then I'm going to, we're going to, for that next live stream, I want you to bring your paper and um, all your drawing supplies, and so you can draw along with me. Okay, I have a question. Is there a specific objects we have to put in our still life? Um, I might suggest some things um, when we get to still life. Still life is module three, and what we're gonna do in module one is we're gonna practice our basic shapes. We're gonna draw things like wine bottles, um, uh, if you don't have a wine bottle, please don't go out and, and get one. Um, any kind of bottle will do, a ketchup bottle, um, just anything that's, that's based off of a cylinder. So what I'm going to try to ask you to do for the first still life, which again, this isn't until module three, um, but 
we will be, um, in module one, we will be drawing objects as well. So, so for things that are cylindrical, um, cups, I always have, uh, even when we're in class, I have um, people drawing um, coffee cups and things like that. Um, coffee cup is a cylinder, right? You're looking at my coffee there. Um, but, um, so things that you might um, want to draw for um, our next class will be uh, bottles, cups, um, any objects, uh, those are your cylinders. So any object that might be a modified um, sphere um, and anything that might be um, a cube. Um, so you'll notice in this last drawing, this is an example of something I'll do for sighting and measuring. For sighting and measuring, I'm going to start out with just a wine bottle. And I'm going to be putting up a picture of a wine bottle um, next time. But if you have a wine bottle or any kind of bottle, it can be olive oil, um, whatever kind of bottle you can come up with, um, we're going to be drawing that and we're going to be taking proportions. But then as we move on, we start at adding more objects so that we can also start to, in other words, we'll start with a single object, like a, a bottle, and then we'll move on to multiple objects so that we're looking at the spaces in between the drawings. Um, so. We're going to start off simple, and we're going to get, as we go on, we're going to get a little bit more complex. Okay, so just keep your eye out. I, I, you shouldn't have to go out and buy anything for this. Everyday household items are the kind of things that we're going to be drawing. Um, anything from your refrigerator or your pantry is good. All right, so that that is module one. Uh, I forget. I get carried away. I'm going to try to just go through the modules real quick. Um, so, module one is sighting and measuring. We're going to be doing the line drawings. We're going to be talking about basic shapes. Um, module two, I don't have anything from module two with me right now, but module two is going to be value. So, if you look in your module two folder on iCollege and you look there, you're going to find um, information about value How, and what is value. Does anybody, can anybody tell me what value is. And while you're thinking about that and typing into your chat, I'm going to respond to this next question. Um, Lisi, for tomorrow's live stream, if we're drawing, can I use the paper I have for now because I still don't have the right size paper? Yes, absolutely. Um, I know that not everyone has had a chance to get your art supplies. What I do when, when we meet in person is I, I, pass out, um, I pass out this kind of newsprint paper. Um, and because the first module, it's all about practice. Um, so you can really use any paper that you can come up with. Um, uh, yes, okay. So, Lisi, you have answered what is value. Value is light or dark in an object. That's right. So value refers to light or dark. And um, uh, <laughs> Weenie Hut Jr., Jr.? <laughs> Uh, tell me what your name is, Weenie Hut Jr., so I don't have to say Weenie Hut Jr. Um, it, is, uh, it is learning where the dark and lighter areas go in your drawing. Yes, that's right. So a lot of people refer to value as shading, right? So when I say value, I'm talking about shading. Alexis. Okay, great. Um, so I'm talking about shading. Um, so when... Um, in value, let's say, if I say, what is this? If I draw this, you'll say, that's a circle, right? But if I, and I'm not going to be able to do a very good job of it with just this, but if, this, if I then start shading it, and I work on making it look three-dimensional by adding the value, And then I add some kind of a shadow under it. And I say, what is this? 
hopefully, if I haven't botched it too bad, you might say, that's a sphere. All right, so what's the difference between um, a circle, the only difference between a circle and a sphere is value. I've added value to this one, and that means the shading. So what does value do? Value is, um, value is really just recreating how light falls across an object, right? So if I'm recreating the value of an object, um, then I am I'm recreating how light falls across that object. So think about it. A sphere is curved, right? So what I try to do and what I'm going to ask you to do at home, if at all possible, is to put a single light source on your, draw, on your objects that you're drawing. Now I just realized I didn't, didn't think about asking you to, to buy a light source, um, and I don't think you should have to, but um, if you have a clip lamp that you can get at Home Depot, um, I'm trying to see if I have one in here, um, I'll show it to you next time. Um, any kind of light that you can, you can add to um, light your objects from one source is good. Um, it's not 100% necessary, it just makes it easier. So if my light source, let's say I'm looking at a cylinder, I mean a sphere, my light source is coming from the upper left, then where the light source strikes this curved uh, three-dimensional object, it's going to be light right here, right? And then where the object starts to curve away from the light source, it's going to get, it's going to go into shadow. And so what value is, value and shading, is just replicating the pattern of light and dark that you see going across an object. And the object's shape is what determines that light pattern. So in the first module, we're going to be talking about how to, how to um, draw things more accurately. We're going to talk about proportion. We're going to talk about um, how to get your shapes right. Um, how to get an eye for proportion. Then we're going to move on to value. How do you then um, put value onto those basic shapes? If I have um, what you're going to want to know and what you will know by the end of module two is how does light fall across a sphere? We're going to talk about that. And then you know how does how does light fall across a cylinder? Um, a cylinder is also curved. Um, uh, shape, and if you have the light source coming from the upper left, um, a cylinder will have, um, it will have right where the light hits it, there will be an area of light, and then it will, as it curves away from the light source, it's going to go into darkness, and there's going to be, so, um, around this edge, it's going to be dark. And as it curves away from the light source, it'll be dark. And we're going to learn how to kind of feather out these transitions so that they look more natural. And you're not just going to be using vine charcoal. You'll also be using um, uh, the charcoal pencils that I gave you. Vine charcoal is very easy to erase, so it's good to start drawing with it. And then at the end, we're going to make the drawing more permanent by using, um, by using the charcoal pencil. All right, so you're going to have your erasers. This is my kneaded eraser. And we can start making, um, making it look more like a cylinder. And the light is going to be catching this top portion of the cylinder will be catching the light. So this will be lighter than the edge of the cylinder. Um, and so we're just going to practice things like this in the value section. We're also going to practice this on um, cubes. Cubes are easy because they're flat. And so what you end up having, if you see three sides of the cube, one side is going to be catching the light. 
maybe the top is going to be catching the light, the side might be in partial shadow, and then the, the side that's away from the light source will be in shadow. And so um, cubes um, and uh, objects that are flat are a, a lot easier than, than the subtlety of these curved objects. Um, so this is module two. Um, module two will be doing practicing sh um, shading and value on our basic shapes. And then we're going to be doing some value objects, which means I'll put up a little bit more complex objects that are based off of these shapes and we'll be drawing those in full value. Um, and that will be with, um, with our fine charcoal to start and then filling in with charcoal pencil. Um, so that's module two. So once we've done module one and module two, that's what, see, my modules all build on each other. So we're slowly building your skills so that when we get to still life, you have the skills you need to complete a still life. Okay, so you're gonna use your skills for module one, to create the bones of the drawing. When I say the bones of the drawing, I'm talking about this. This is the bones of a drawing. There's not, I put a little bit of value in here, but there's, there's basically no value. You're gonna get the bones of the drawing correct. Then you're going to move on to value. Then you're gonna, once the bones of your drawing are correct, you're gonna put your value in. And then you're gonna complete the drawing, right? So. That's still life. Um, and then after, uh, after still life, we're going to talk a little bit about perspective. Um, one point perspective, two point perspective, three point perspective. That helps you draw things um, where, like rooms, interiors of rooms, exteriors of houses, cityscapes. Um, basically, it's going to be teaching you um, how, I mean, everything we do in this class is replicating how our eyes see things. So let's say you're walking um, down the catwalk at GSU, right? The catwalk is really long and narrow. We know for a fact that the catwalk is just the sidewalk with posts that go down it. But if you're standing at one end and you're looking at the other end, it appears to converge, right? So you have your vanishing point. This is so when you're when you're looking and walking down the catwalk at Georgia State, that's one point perspective. There's a vanishing point in the distance. And the catwalk, instead of we know the catwalk is actually straight. But when we look at it and we're looking at it go off into the distance, it converges, right? When you see a road uh, or a painting of a road um, it converges. Um, and that's just how things look naturally. So next time you're on GSU campus or anywhere um, like that and you're on a catwalk, um, notice how, how the lines don't look straight. They, they converge. And they converge into the distance. If there are poles are on the catwalk, the poles right where you're standing that are holding up the catwalk on either side Let's say you're standing here, and these are the, the poles that are holding up the catwalk. There's, uh, you can see that there's, well, I don't know how many feet, maybe there's eight feet in between each pole. But as you look into the distance, those poles appear to get closer and closer together as they go off into the distance. And that's just a function of our, our vision. And so perspective is, is about understanding how to translate that, that, that we're seeing in three dimensions into two dimensions. Um, so there's a couple different ones. One point where you have one vanishing point, and then there's two point perspective where an object has two vanishing points. So we're gonna go over that, and we'll practice drawing some of those things. Um, probably what I'll ask you to do during that um, phase is to go outside somewhere, and either draw an exterior uh, building or an exterior catwalk or hallway, or you can draw um, an interior. You can draw the room where you are. Um, like I said, each one of us has different circumstances, and um, some of us, uh, you know, may be able to go certain places, and, and others of us maybe 
maybe you got a job and you, you got to complete your assignment and it's just easier for you to draw an interior inside your home and that's fine. So for that um, module, everybody's going to be drawing something different. So that's perspective. Um, the final module, we're going to skip to using uh, micron pens in the final module. And I have some of those on order from you, so you don't have to buy the micron pens. Um, they're not here yet, um, but when they get here, I will be giving them to you. Um, so let me show you an example of our textures module. And again, these are all spelled out in the module folders on the iCollege page. This YouTube channel is really to just supplement the iCollege page. Um, so um, what you're going to do is go to your iCollege page um, for each module and look at everything there. I've got student work there. I've got uh, sometimes videos there. There's a ton of videos on the perspective uh, in the perspective folder because um, there's a couple of people online who are really good at teaching perspective drawing. Um, Perspective drawing, if you are an interior design major, you really want to go ahead and look at that. Um, and you want to take that perspective module um, really seriously because as an interior designer, you'll be doing um, perspective drawings. I mean, you know, now it's probably some kind of computer program, but you'll still have to understand it. Um, and that's why, you know, drawing one is, you know, that's a good example of, of what you'll use if you're interior design and graphic design will be using it too um, you know if you are drawing something that requires perspective you're going to want to use it all right so again lots of videos on perspective so the last and final um, uh, module is called texture and there's my one of my favorite youtube artists alfonso dunn um, and there are a lot of links to his videos and this exercise is based off of his video so what we're going to do is we're going to draw textures um, and the way that we'll start off you know we'll go back to our skills from module one and module two and we'll build on those in that we understand how to um, how a basic uh, cube is shaded how a basic cylinder is shaded and um, how uh, a basic um, sphere is shaded. But on, on the texture module, what we're going to then talk about is, well, how do you then wrap texture around a cylinder and still make it look three-dimensional? I don't know how large you can see, see these, but I'll try to bring it up a little bit and see if that helps. Um, so. Basically, these are cubes that have kind of a texture wrap on them. And you'll note that on the cube, the cube still has a very dark side, um, a lighter side, and, and a side that's a little bit less light. It's somewhere in between in value. So again, um, this is uh, tree bark. Light side, a side that's in shadow, and a side that is in between the two. Okay, so we're going to be talking about that. This one is fun. We'll also be doing uh, animal scales, so lizard scales. The reason why he, on his video, he chooses to make this front uh, cube the lightest because that's where all the detail is, is in the light. So he's chosen to have the light source coming up at it this way where this is the lightest, this is the shadow side, and this is the medium side. So. We're going to be talking about how to realistically draw texture. Um, and this is an example of what you'll be doing in your sketchbook. These are pages from a sketchbook. So in the texture module, we will first practice drawing textures on cubes, cylinders, and spheres. And then your final project is your multiple source texture drawing. And what that is, that means that you will be using multiple sources to create um, kind of a, a, a fanciful yet realistic drawing. So what do I mean when I say multiple sources? Well, we've we'll, up until this point, we'll have been drawing mostly from life. 
Uh, so a life source would be an object that's, that you can see that's placed in front of you. Another example of a source would be a photograph. So on this you can um, also draw from photographs. Um, maybe you're going to do um, a, a, a self-portrait of, well, okay, I'll just use this example. There's an artist who does portraits with texture maps. So he'll do a portrait of a person, but their face is made out of wood, right? So that, that kind of drawing requires multiple sources. It, it requires that you look at this person, um, either a picture of the person or look at the person um, in, in real life. Uh, if you're drawing yourself, you could set up a mirror. Um, and then it also requires that you understand um, what a wood wood texture looks like. So you might have as a separate source um, a piece of uh, wood or uh, several photographs of wood. Um, you'll have your practice um, and you're going to use multiple sources to create really interesting drawings. Um, and it, you know I encourage you to go go back to the iCollege page and look at look at all the wonderful student work that's in the texture section and begin to understand what it means to draw from multiple sources. There's also a lot of really great artists um, that I reference um, that you can look up that work with multiple sources um, to create things that didn't exist before. Um, so that's, the, that's all the modules um, and examples of how the modules will work. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else for today. So tomorrow's live stream is really going to be a repeat of this one. So if you tuned into this one, you, um, you don't need to tune in to tomorrow's. Uh, you can if you want, if you miss some things, but it's really going to be the same overview. The reason I'm doing that is, is there might be people who didn't make it to this one. Uh, or had technical problems. So I'm just going to repeat this tomorrow. And then on Wednesday at 9 a.m., I would like everybody to show up with some kind of, of um, drawing implement. Maybe you've, you're going to go to school tomorrow uh, and pick up your, your pencils, or maybe you've already got them. But show up um, to the live stream on Wednesday if you can ready to draw. Maybe you can put your computer on the kitchen table or a table somewhere that has some space um, and so that you can follow along with me and draw. Um, usually I get everybody drawing on the first day, but um, this is not usual times, so we're just going to have to um, take it slow. So. Again, get your supplies as soon as humanly possible because I want us to start drawing as soon as we can. Um, next time we're going to practice our basic shapes for warm-up and um, I uh, am going to also um, bring a, a wine bottle. So next time show up with some kind of bottle that you want to draw. Something that's based off of the cylinder. It can be a Coke bottle, it can be a wine bottle, um, it can be any bottle from your pantry or your cabinet. Um, it can be ketchup bottle. Um, just bring something that you're going to draw. And um, hopefully you will have your, you will have gone to school and picked up your drawing supplies. I'm going to be taking these to Jen um, today. Um, I, do, I can't guarantee you what time they'll be there, so it's, she's really expecting you to pick up Tuesday through Thursday in between 11 and 4, um, and th that information is in your email as to her office. Her office is when you go in the, the Fine Arts Building at the, the level where the, um, the auditorium is, her office is to the hallway to the left. If you're facing Cole Auditorium, it's to the hallway to the left. Um, and her door is going to be there on the left. I think it's CF110. I'm not sure about that. Check your email. Um, and so she will be there and she will give you these pencils. But you, no rush to pick this up. Um, you, it will have the bamboo skewer in it as well. 
Um, so if you already have these objects, you don't even have to go get it if you don't want to. I'm leaving that up to you. Um, there will be more supplies arriving later in the semester, like these drawing boards. I'm going to try to order enough drawing boards for everyone. Um, we don't currently have enough. Um, I have 37 uh, drawing students. I expect there to be about 40 when it's done, because that would be both online classes being full. So I'm going to, I've ordered these boards, and you'll be able to check it out for the semester, um, and then return it at the end of the semester. If you've bought one, or if you want to buy one, uh, I encourage you to do that. I mean, if you're an art major and, and drawing is your thing, these boards are great. Um, and I think they cost about, I can't remember, maybe about $20. Um, not sure about that for, for certain. But I will get you one. Buy one if you want. Does anybody have any questions for me? Um, as far as, I know you've been typing them in as you go. Um, I can't wait to start drawing, and um, I hope that this, this platform works out. Um, so far, it seems to be going pretty good. Um, last semester, when we had to stop in the middle of the semester and go online, <clears throat> I didn't have this technology, and so I couldn't do any demonstrations. And so I'm really excited that now I can draw and um, in real time, I can give my lectures. Usually my lectures are in person, and I draw on the dry, dry erase board at school. Um, so this is how we'll do it. Um, so everybody, um, what I would say to you about this week, get your supplies. That's really important. Um, you can pick up these pencils in the um, bamboo skewer Tuesday through Thursday, 11 to 4, in Jen's office. And um, just try to, get, try to get paper for this week. Um, for the still life, is it a specific object? Oh, OK, I think I already answered that. Um, I will um, suggest for next week, again, that you get some kind of bottle um, for, for um, practicing. Um, and then as we go, I'll be giving you suggestions of things to, to um, use for your still life. Um, and I might throw in some photos every now and then, so there might be some photo drawing. If, if I ask for something specific that people don't have, I might be able to just take a photograph and, um, you know, throw that in um, the iCollege page for you to look at. Um, Paolo, the vine charcoal was not included in the supplies list. Are there any suggestions you recommend? Okay, Paolo, the reason... I didn't include it in the supplies list is that I almost always supply it um, myself for the students. And um, the way things are working out this semester, I've put one or two of these in your bag. Um, so let me see what, what's in this bag. Um, but the problem is there's so many students um, that, so this one has, has one that's about that size in it. Um, you won't find this probably at the art supply store. This is Bob's Bob's Vine Charcoal. Um, you can go to the, to the art supply store or you can look it up on, on Dick Blick if you want to go ahead and get some. Um, I, w I do have some on order. It'll probably take about two weeks to get here. So um, you can use what's in the starter bag, but it may possibly run out. Um, we'll see. Hopefully it won't. But the Vine Charcoal, what you want to get is... It's called vine charcoal, but it's also called willow charcoal. So it's kind of the same thing. So there's vine, and there it's sometimes called willow. And you want to get, if you have a choice, you want to make sure you get soft. Okay, so soft willow charcoal. You can get it at any art supply store. You can order it from Dick Blick. Um, there is, like I said, there is a little bit in your starter kit. And there will be more coming, hopefully, in a couple of weeks, depending on how long it takes the supplies to come in. And in, when the supplies come in in a couple of weeks, you're going to do a, probably another supply pickup. Um, and this is only going to be the things that I said I was supplying. It's not going to be paper. You've got to get your own paper. Um, it's going to be these boards. And hopefully, I'll have some more willow charcoal for you. Um, 
Any other questions for me? Um, the willow charcoal comes in different shapes and sizes. You're probably just going to get this kind at the store. It's small, it's small cylindrical um, willow charcoal, and um, it comes in a, a small box. All right, so um, we will see you again, for those of you who are here, Wednesday at 9 a.m., if you can make it. Um, you, you can either, um, I'm going to repeat this um, thing tomorrow, this subject tomorrow, and then on Wednesday, I'm going to be going to the drawing. So if you happen to miss Wednesday, you can also look at it on Thursday. Um, all right, so we're going to just do this to get started, and we'll see where the semester takes us. Please, if you haven't yet, take some time with the iCollege page. Go explore the folders. Look at the student work. Anytime in my folder when you see um, just um, JPEG documents, that's usually pictures of student work at the end of each folder, um, and you'll get an idea of what we're going to be doing this semester. Um, really exciting. Um, any other questions before we go? Um, let me ask you this, since you guys are all there um, on typing in, would you like to do, after we hang up, would you guys like to do a, um, a Zoom meeting where I, I can hang up here and go to Zoom and generate a Zoom link? so that you guys can uh, introduce yourselves and meet each other. Anyone? Anyone want to do Zoom? I tell you what, I will do it anyway. Um, I'm going to send out a Zoom link and we'll see um, who shows up, if there's maybe somebody will show up that missed this. Um, and I know that Zoom is irritating, um, <laughs> and I'm not going to try to overuse it, but I know that some of you might like to see your uh, fellow classmates, um, and so I'm not going to overuse it, but I thought I'd use it to, um, to introduce, um, you know, so that you guys can introduce each other. Critique is not going to be done on Zoom. That's too difficult. We're going to do that on um, discussion board on iCollege. So Zoom will be reserved for things like um, group activities where we want to um, talk with each other in, in real time, although this is working quite well. Um, and office hours. You know, if you have something um, that you want to talk to me about um, in person, we can, we can Zoom. We can do a Zoom without video. If you don't feel like seeing yourself on video, that's fine. Um, we can just Zoom. You can just talk to each other through Zoom, and that's fine too. Um, Dean, uh, you're in your you're in my 2D class. Where they'll be live streaming for that class as well. There will be. Yes, um, I just got um, a new 2D class. Originally, I only had one. Um, now I've got two 2D classes and. The other one was put online at the last minute, and they gave it to me. And so that class doesn't actually start this week. It starts next week. But um, for my uh, 2D class, I will be doing a live stream uh, probably tomorrow after, after the drawing live stream, um, giving everybody a chance to get their, um, pick up their supplies. Uh, there, Dean, there will also be a supplies bag for 2D. Um, so, uh, yeah, I can't wait for, for this semester, and, you know, this is really experimental. Uh, drawing has not been done online before now, so this is absolutely brand new. So I would appreciate your feedback as we go. As I said, we are a community, right? We are a community that's here to support each other, and that includes you with me. So, um... When things aren't working, when you have suggestions, um, you know, feel free to suggest. We are, we are really, um, we're creating something new that hasn't been done here before. Um, and I think it's really exciting. I, I think the circumstances are terrible for it, 
but it's exciting for us to know how to do this. So in any situation, if it comes up where, you know, there were several days um, in years past when school had to close for different reasons, um, you know, this is a useful tool to have. Um, all right, so I'm going to hang up. And thank you guys for attending. I'm going to go ahead and send out a, um, a link for Zoom. Anyone who wants to join the Zoom um, and introduce yourself to your classmates and to me in a way that's a little bit more personal, we'll do that. And like I said, I know Zoom is irritating. We won't do it a lot. Um, especially if your other classes are big into Zoom. I don't want to torture you too much on that. All right, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I'm really excited about this semester in a different kind of way, right? It's just a different, it's a different beast altogether. Uh, and I remind you that if you haven't watched the Supplies Explained videos, to go ahead and watch those. Also, I don't know if it helps you to subscribe to, to my channel or not. If it makes it easier for you to join, then you can subscribe. Um, I'm not a YouTuber, um, so I'm not really hip on those things, um, but we'll figure them out as we go. All right, everybody, I'll see you on Zoom.